All right. I came up with this one on the fly. Um, are we numbing because of adulthood? Like, this sort of piggybacks off of the filling the void aspect. I made a video on this in the past. Um, is it the, the stressors from adulthood and losing that childhood innocence and how everything was colorful and everything was new and then now everything's like bland and grayed out and boring. It's like I feel like the older we get, the less zest we have for life, right? The less colorful life is. Um It's sad, but it's it's sort of true in a way. Like, remember being a kid growing up, the first, like, 10, 12 years of my life seemed so long. Seemed so long. It's, it felt like 50 years. And now that I'm older, like, my 20s felt like a year. Well, maybe, like, three or four years. But as time goes on, like everyone says, time goes faster the older you get. And I think that's because you're experiencing longer increments of time. So five years doesn't seem as long as it did when it was half of your life to like the age of 10, five years is half of your lifespan. Now it's only a sixth when you're 30, right? That's why I think the more time you experience, the longer their duration, the less it seems. That's why my, my perception of it is, but when you're when you're a kid, it's like everything's vibrant, everything's new. Then you get older and it's like I've done a lot of things, you know? A lot of things I haven't done yet, but like that zest, like finding out new things, new words, um finding that natural joy, it sort of like goes away. And I feel like that's why people chase so many substances. And I and I know myself, I'm constantly hunting that that feeling of being young again, like, like where everything's an adventure, you know, the, the knowledge is infinite to learn. You're so young, you know, I really don't know where to go with this. It's just, I think that zest leaves a lot of adults, maybe even teens and teenhood, you know, you get old, you get thrown out into the world, you need to provide, you need to make money, you have bills, you have stress, you have a credit score, you have relationship issues, life issues, you know, grieving. Life gets tough, man. And when you're young, there's a saying, youth is wasted on the young because people that would appreciate it are already too old. And, and that's nothing against young people. I was the same way. You don't know how good you have it. Like, if you do have a providing set of parents or parent and you don't have bills to pay and you know, they give you what you want. You have it pretty easy just going to school and then doing what you want. You know, you have all that free time. Now I also find enjoyment in being an adult, having grown up money and, you know, not having to deal with schoolwork. I was academically inclined, but I did not like school at all. But, uh, I don't, you know, I don't mind grinding, you know, my job and providing for myself. I don't mind it so much. Do I wish I could have done things differently? Sure. I'm, I'm sure everybody does. Um, but that, that young, youthful void that's filled, you know, there's like no void there. And then that void slowly comes in like a dark abyss as you get older and the color slowly fades, you know, I think that's why we do what we do and everyone wants that back. And I, I still don't know how to achieve that. I, I admitted this in my filling the void video. I don't know how to fully fill that void. I'm still doing it to this day in one way or another impulse buying, collecting the gym, you know, even even too much working out, some people may disagree, can be bad, but, like, I'm constantly chasing, like, I do it to make myself feel better. And it, it's a good outlet. It's a good obsession to have to fill that void. It's a healthy way to do it. Um, 
comes in many, many forms. But it really goes hand in hand with this useful talk, you know, filling that void, losing that zest. And how to obtain it again, I feel like that's just building a foundation and giving yourself something to look forward to and constantly have goals to achieve. You know what I mean? Like we're very goal oriented beings and we're creatures of habit. <clears throat> you know, we take the path of least resistance. We are 70% water. Water flows to the path of least resistance too. I don't know if that's a good metaphor or not or a good comparison. But a lot of people are like that in life too. They take the path of least resistance. But what I've found is like every influencer that's like in fitness, like Goggins, Rogue, and all of them, they'll all tell you the best character is formed through uh, trials and tribulations and hardships. You have to challenge yourself. You have to throw yourself outside of that comfort zone. Do I want to work out every day? No. Do I enjoy it? Yeah, I do sometimes. But there are days where I don't want to do it, but I force myself to do it. Um, do I want to work 50, 60 hours a week? Did I want to work 80 hours in the oil field? No, I did not. But I, I did it. And it built character. It gave me resources to use in my life. Would a lot of people do these things? No. But the thing is, people that have are willing to do things that people that People that are have-nots will not do, okay? I've done a lot of things in my life that people are not willing to do, you know? And there's a lot of things that people have done that I have, I'm still not willing to do, which I'm open to do now, you know? And if you're not willing to, you know, put yourself into difficulty, you're not going to progress as well. Um, like Wes Watson talks about, there's always an expansion phase after a contraction phase, and in that contraction phase, people dwell and they're like, oh, woe is me. Oh, my gosh, I'm never going to get better. But in reality, to break out of it and expand, you have to grow that character and go through that difficult time. And you'll come out even better. It will contract during difficult times and expand out. If You, you got to get through it and you got to have that positive outlook. And it's hard sometimes. I fail at it all the time. But it's true, though. If I didn't go through my nightmare relationships... I wouldn't have built up, built the character I have and learned my lessons and moved on. If I didn't go through working all the hours I did in the oil field, it wouldn't have given me that discipline. It's not easy, you know, working long hours, but you do it and you get through it. And when you're done at the end of the day, you feel good about it. You're exhausted. It builds that character. I work for my money and the things I own come from labor. It's not from ad revenue or mommy and daddy's money or having a 2 million subscriber channel where I can just sit here and, you know, milk money from a revenue system. It's not like that. You know, it's through sweat. And I, I pride that someone who owns a bunch of things and it was handed to them or they were like, they have a really successful channel. I don't look at that as I don't, I don't really hold that up to high regards as someone who worked labor or put sweat into work. You know what I mean? If you go back 30 years, a lot of these influencers on here wouldn't, wouldn't be rich no offense they wouldn't be they maybe they would have found another path in life to financial gains but a lot of people that are successful online they would not have been successful 30 years ago and that's just the truth i mean you can argue all you want about it but tiktok has made some less than smart people wealthy and it's been that way for the past decade with people that really don't deserve the wealth they're getting it and you know what to each their own i'm not gonna I don't really care, but <clears throat> if they show off a mansion or a Lambo, I don't, it's like it was handed to them and it really was. They can say, oh, I worked for it, making my, my, my content, my content. Well, if I have a $500 item from labor, to me, it's more meaningful than someone who made it through 10 minutes of ad revenue. That's just me. We can agree to disagree on that. And I'll always, I'm old school in that regard. Or people that are handed, you know, trust fund babies. You can have all you want. You can flex all you want. I don't care. I don't even see you. I live right next to a town that's top 10 most expensive colleges in the entire United States. And a lot of 
a lot of kids there have mommy and daddy money and I look right past them. I see right past them. And it, it that sounds cruel in a way, but like <clears throat> they're going to grow up without a lot of character, you know? And I just don't agree with people being handed everything. I mean, that could be a touchy subject, I guess. And if you are one of those people, I'm sorry. I just feel like <clears throat> people should be put through hardships, and some people don't have to go through it. They don't know a lick of labor or a lick of hardship in their life because they're given everything. But I, just, I see right through it. And to be honest, I don't really want to even associate with people that are handed everything. I'm not saying they're all bland people, but people that are going through hardships, even substance abuse issues, are much more emotionally inclined. They have way more character, you know. It is what it is, man. Everyone's chasing clout. Everyone loves clout, you know. But some people are going way too far for it, man. Society is whack. And now I'm going off on a, a tangent like always. But, yeah, we're constantly chasing that childhood color, right? When everything was vibrant. And I don't have the answer for it. I, I have my own tips and experiences to try to get it back. I just don't know if it'll ever be like being, you know, super useful again. If you have the answers, let me know in the comments. I mean, the, my best answer is to build a foundation, build a life you love outside of your work. When you come home, you, you're enjoying yourself. Like I, I do have that. And I want to expand on that. But there's times I still get down in the nitty gritty and I'm chasing. I'm chasing that, you know, that childhood feeling or filling that void. And as adults, do we ever fill it? I mean, there's very rich, successful people that own a lot of properties, a lot of cars. They have everything they want and they're still miserable. I'm not saying everyone is, but... There are some very successful people that are more miserable than homeless people, and that's just crazy to me. But <clears throat> like I said, you got to remember all these people you see with all this wealth, that's less than 1%, man. 99% of the time, people are working day to day trying to make it by and feed themselves. You can't look at it like everyone in your neighbor have, you know, have all this money and you're and you don't have it, you know, because that's what is building this depression for people. Every the one percent's being magnified, and what's sad is a percentage of that one percent are not even happy, but they look happy online, right? I, you know, like, yeah, it is what it is. I've made a whole other video on this topic, but society is in a really weird place. I'm so happy to have grown up pre 2000. I love computers and I loved the internet when it first came out. Social media has turned things a little sideways for people. I love the early days, you know. Late 90s, man. Times were different. Everything's amazing now. Technology is so amazing. Even gaming, like, you couldn't matchmake back in the day. Now you can just get into a match and go before you had to enter an IP address. Everything was on an online H uh, HTML site to, like, link up and run leagues. Now everything's integrated fast, right in your face, go, go, go. But I feel like it comes with consequences. Everyone's handed everything. Everything's quick rewards. People are spending... People are going into debt over skins and video games, man. Like... It's, it even gripped me years ago, like Fortnite when I first started playing it years ago and certain CODs, like I, I put more money, I put money into it. I don't, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I'll, I'll fund a game up to like 40 to $60 if I like it and that's it. And past two, three years, I've, I haven't spent even a couple hundred dollars in the games this year. I, I bought Modern Warfare 2 last year and I'm buying Diablo 4 this year besides my top tier computer right now. I'm not spending money in the games and I refuse to. And if it's an indie game or an e early access game, I'll fund it for like up to like 40 to $60 just to help the development team out. I, I believe in that, but spending hundreds and thousands in the Roblox or Robux or V bucks, which kids are doing to their parents and putting them in the debt. That's just insanity to me. And people are, you know, these companies are taking advantage of these kids and the families. It can be very detrimental, but now we're going off topic again, but Yeah. I hate how I do that. That's ADD. 
honestly. Some of you got some of you like how I ramble like that, but it's like I get so off topic. But uh not much more to say. It's just how do you get back to that exploratory feeling of being a kid again, you know? You feel like everything's been invented, it's all been done, it's mundane, everything's gray, right? It's a struggle sometimes, you know. 